Oh man, am I so excited for this recipe today. I'm getting ready to show you how to make one of my all time favorite breads, brioche. Amazingly buttery, incredibly delicious, super easy to make. I know you can do this and you will fall in love with this recipe. Undoubtedly, you've seen at the grocery store brioche hamburger buns, brioche hot dog buns, brioche bread. I mean, it is everywhere, especially the last five years. It's super popular. And like I said, it's way easier to make than you may have thought. First thing we need to do is get that raft going with our yeast. Let's go. I've got a stand mixer with the hook attachment and I'm gonna add in some very warm milk in between 116 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason it's so warm is because the bowl to the mixer is cold and it will help cool it down to that perfect temperature. Now I'm gonna add in a little bit of sugar for the yeast to feed on. So now sprinkle in that active yeast. I'm not sure why I like sprinkling it all over the top like this. I just do, it's just a habit. Go ahead and grab a whisk. And what we wanna do is mix these things together for maybe just a couple of seconds to make sure they are combined. One of the biggest questions that I get is, what if I don't have active yeast, I have instant yeast? What you do with instant yeast is you don't wait for the wrap. You simply go because it works instantly no need to activate it. Okay, now for the next step. After about five to seven minutes, you'll see this nice little raft kind of form on the top, should be nice and bubbly. This is absolutely perfect. At this point, I'm gonna be adding in some all-purpose flour. I'm using all-purpose because bread flour is kind of hard to find right now, and plus, most folks just have all-purpose flour. So go ahead and add it in there, and now what we wanna do is start the mixer just on low speed, and it's gonna take maybe just two to three minutes for everything to come together. We're not looking to knead the dough at this point at all. It'll be very, very sticky. That's totally fine and completely normal. Now what I'm gonna do is put a little plastic wrap over top. You can absolutely use a kitchen towel as well. And then for my neat little proofing trick, we're going into the oven, make sure the oven has been off for a long time. We're just gonna crack it, leave the oven light on. This will create that perfect proofing temperature so that our dough can rise and double in size. While we're doing this rise, I wanna let you know that this is called the sponge method. It's a two-step process where you make your sponge first, which is our flour and our milk and our yeast. We let it ferment, we bring it back out, and we add all of the other ingredients and then we ferment it a little bit more. Just wanna let you know for a little information. Now let's pull this dough out and get to going. This looks absolutely perfect. We're gonna remove it from the oven, put it right on the mixer. Go ahead and take the plastic wrap off the top. We're gonna drop the hook in because now it's time to start getting things mixed in. So just on low speed, I've got a, quite a few eggs here. We're gonna add in just one at a time until they're mixed. Now they're not going to be mixed in, but we just want it to sort of resemble that raw scrambled egg look just like you see here. This is perfect. Now we're gonna stop it and add in the rest of our dry ingredients. So I've got quite a bit of all purpose flour that we're going to add in here. Once it's in, next we're gonna hit it with some sugar. This is where a lot of the sweetness in this brioche bread will come from. And for some seasoning, of course, I'm gonna hit it with some sea salt. You could use regular salt if you'd like. Now go ahead and put it on low to medium speed. It's gonna take a second for all those ingredients to become combined, maybe five to six minutes. At this point, we are gonna add in some softened, unsalted butter a little bit at a time. The dough is gonna get stickier, but we're incorporating a lot of fat. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. This is where it gets that browning, that tenderness, and that sweetness, and that deliciousness from in this bread. At this point, we are going to remove everything from the hook. So once it's lift up, scrape it really good, get all those delicious little dough morsels off of there. It's going in the refrigerator. We wanna cool everything down and it's gonna take about 30 minutes. The reason it goes in the refrigerator is because we need the butter to cool down. This is a really sticky dough and can become really hard to handle. So that's why we do it. Like I said before, 30 minutes max. But you'll also notice this is a lot of dough. And the reason being is I wanted to show you two different ways how to shape it. We're gonna make some loaves and we're also gonna make maybe a more traditional shape that you would see in Sicily or Italy. Sorry, France. So once it is done cooling, let's take it out and get to making it. So go ahead and remove your dough from the refrigerator. This looks excellent. It's nice and cooled down. And on a clean surface, we want to dust it up with a little bit more flour. 
Now go ahead and grab your bowl of chilled dough and we are going to remove as much as we possibly can here. And here's a quick little trick. Since the dough does get really sticky, what you may want to do is dip your hands in a little bit of cold water. This will help so that your hands don't stick to the dough. Cool little trick. Most people think flour water actually does it as well. So once I'm at this point, I'm going to divide it into thirds. Like I said, I'm going to be making a few loaves and some traditional shaped little buns. So once we're at this point, oh, dang it. I totally forgot to butter up my loaf pans. Be sure to do this before you even start. I forgot in the middle of it, so I'm doing it now. Okay, now go back. I'm taking a third of the dough that I cut up and I'm forming it into a rectangle, maybe 12 to 16 inches in length by eight inches long. Once you get it to that point, simply roll it over. This is very similar to my two hour white bread recipe. Once it's to this point, go ahead and grab your bench knife, scrape it underneath, plop it right into that buttered up loaf pan. Now I'm gonna set it on a sheet tray and put a little towel over the top because like I said, I wanna go and show you a different shape. Now this is much more of a classic sort of bun shape. So take a little piece off, get it nice and round. I'm gonna set it on a sheet tray laying with parchment paper. And then I've got some smaller size little balls that we need to form just like you see here. Make it and shape it. I like to push through from the bottom and kind of squeeze it at the bottom so it becomes a nice round shape. And we're gonna fit it right in top of the other dough like you see here. This is excellent. We're too gonna put a towel on here and we're gonna stick with my cool little proofing trick. So we're going back to the oven. We're just going to crack it, leave only the oven light on. It's gonna take maybe 45 minutes for it to get that second proof. In the meantime though, I've got a bowl. We wanna make a little egg wash for the top. So crack in one large egg and a little bit of whole milk using a fork or a whisk, whatever you have handy. Go ahead and mix all of these ingredients together, set it to the side. Now let's take out our bread and give it a little look. Boom, looks excellent. Now what we're gonna do is brush the top with our egg wash. Don't forget to do those little round ball buns that we made. And then once you're finished brushing, we're just gonna sprinkle on a little bit more salt. Obviously it's gonna add flavor and it's also gonna help in the browning process of our bread. We're going in the oven on 375 degrees Fahrenheit. The little ones are gonna take about 18 minutes. The bigger loaf, maybe 30 to 35. So after that 18 to 20 minute period, let's take them out. These look amazing. Oh my gosh, you guys. And then 12 to 17 minutes more, we're gonna take out our big loaves. You'll know they're done because they'll read at 190 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. We just simply wanna place them on a rack for about 20, 30 minutes until they're cool. It smells amazing in here. Oh my God, brioche is just, I just can't say enough about it. Seriously, it's so good. You gotta wait maybe 20, 30 minutes. You don't have to wait for a complete cool down. It is all the way done in the center, so we are good to go. Let's plate up in slow-mo. Before I start, Comey's, you know it every week. It's all about these fundamental cooking techniques and putting them into practice. Knowing how to use the sponge method to make delicious, perfect brioche bread. You start putting these things in practice, I can promise you all of your homemade food from scratch will taste way better than anything at the store or at the restaurants. You'll never want to eat bread from the store again when you can make delicious brioche like this from home every single time. Slice it up, serve it up, and man, oh man, check out this beauty. Seriously, the most incredible bread of all time. I cannot say it enough. Be sure to make it soon. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Check out this video. You will love this recipe. I'll see you on there.